G'day Ice Cream Lovers, my name is Steve Christensen. Welcome to this episode of the Scoop School session. Uh, we used to call it a podcast. We still have a podcast floating out there, you know. And I get an email probably once a month from Buzzsprout to say, you've had 76 listens of your podcast. We do need to get back into the podcast side of things. If you find it out there, it is legit. Uh, we just haven't kind of done new sessions for a while. I don't know why I'm going down this road. Do want to thank our episode sponsor, Meadowvale. Meadowvale, a little bit west of Chicago, a manufacturer of frozen custard mixes, premium ice cream mixes. They're an HTST manufacturer. Um, Eddie. Steve, Jason, the whole crew there, great people, love the ice cream business, great fount of knowledge. Uh, Meadowvale-inc.com, the link's down here, just click it, tell them that I said hello. Uh, we thank them for their episode sponsorship. I did want to talk a little bit in this episode about commissary kitchens, pros and cons. Um, and I'm going to attach down here an article that I wrote about basically the life cycle of an ice cream uh, entrepreneur. And basically that life cycle, without paraphrasing too much, I'll let you read it, it's a pretty good read. Uh, that life cycle basically is you're making ice cream at home, you got friends that say this is fantastic, bring your ice cream to someone's place, they say hey can you make ice cream for our kid's birthday party, and one step leads to another to the point where you've decided, you know what, I've got enough people here telling me to make ice cream for a living or at least uh, start that process that I need to find a place that I can start making it en masse and that generally is the commissary kitchen. If you've got one in your neighborhood or in your town, generally they're shared kitchen space or a commissary kitchen um, and basically what it is it's kind of like a room like this, a big open room. It's got stainless steel tables, it's got shelving, it might have a walk-in cooler, walk-in freezer, um, some general restaurant equipment. And you can basically spend money there and say, well, I can use this place for a certain period of time on a certain day. Um, some of them run a little bit differently. I might have to book a certain period of time there. Um, or you might be able to just kind of fill in a book and say, I want every Tuesday night. Uh, yeah, again, they all have different rules but as you start doing research into a commissary kitchen the pros are is that that is a facility that is basically food certified the health department have come in said you can produce food in here so you don't have to run the gamut the food safety gamut of making ice cream in your kitchen or in your bathtub and uh, someone getting sick and then next thing you're in a whole lot of hot water so a commissary kitchen allows you that food safety regulation space to now start to kind of basically bridge the gap between making ice cream at home and perhaps having your own facility where you're making ice cream. So it's great like that. Uh, the downsides and some of the challenges of a commissary kitchen is that they may not have and they more than likely won't have the equipment that you will need to make ice cream. Unless they are willing to lease you some space uh, and charge you utilities, sometimes it's a challenge to just wheel a batch freezer in, wheel a blast freezer in and basically start making ice cream. You've got to start talking to the people there because generally a lot of this space here, and I keep kind of doing this like this as a commissary kitchen and it's not, it's the Scoop School Lab, but you get the idea. So this space here, let's say it was a commissary kitchen, this space basically is a general food service use, but you have a very specific reason that you want to use that and that's for making ice cream. So talk to them about, hey, can I bring equipment in? Is there a surcharge for utilities? Um, can I make some modifications here and run a, a drain, a PVC drain to the uh, floor drain over here so I can drain out from my water cool batch freezer, whatever it is. So talk to them about equipment, talk to them about um, utilities. The second is that although it seems great that they have this really big walk-in freezer and walk-in cooler that you can put your ice cream mix and your candy and so forth, and a lot of them do have uh, racking areas and places in the freezers that you can actually lock up and kind of keep secure. The downside is that even if you're using a plastic bucket, there are smells and odors that can leach into that ice cream and we've had people who have basically gone to a commissary kitchen uh, after the uh, ABC pizza place has just been in there making a whole batch of pe pepperoni pizzas. I don't know why I said pe pe pepperoni. 
pepperoni pizzas, uh, and now all of a sudden your vanilla bean, your Tahitian vanilla bean ice cream has the distinct aroma of pepperoni. So that's another challenge too. You've got to make sure that what you're doing in there basically uh, is not being overpowered by other aromas, uh, other liquids, other things that are happening within that kitchen. If you can find a harmonious relationship with the person who owns the kitchen and with all of the other people using the kitchen, that's awesome. Uh, you'll find that a lot of commissary kitchens are used for or by people who have food trucks. So if Friday and Saturday and Sunday are their big production days for food trucks, they'll be in there Thursday and Friday. They'll basically fill this place from wall to wall. I don't know why I keep saying this place, this isn't a commissary kitchen, but I've put myself into the commissary kitchen space that it's almost like we are in one. So you may think, well, if the place is vacant on Monday, Tuesday and Wednesday, that's when I'll go in and start to make ice cream. So have a look at the schedule, have a look at what they're making there, have a look at whether you can take equipment in. But again, it's a great bridge from making your ice cream at home to um, basically launching into the ice cream business. Now, if you're in the ice cream business and you've run out of production space in your own store, um, having a commissary kitchen or leasing space in a commissary kitchen might be a good bridge to actually your own production facility. So give that some thought as well. If you want to grow your wholesale business, your catering business, but you don't have room in your current location, commissary kitchen's a great way to kind of start that step into your own production facility. Anyway, I love them so far as you're just keeping an eye out for those few manamanatars. I say manamanatars, it's a Cook Island term meaning problem. You can look that up. If you have any questions, uh, leave them in the comments down below. We love reading comments. A lot of the topics that we have for these videos come from the comments down below. So give us a like, leave a comment, keep on scooping. See you in the next video.